I love telling people that I work for a film distribution company because they're always like, and I always imagine like, you want to buy some films? <laughs> like, <laughs> you want to buy a sundial? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like full of movies. <laughs> yeah. Hello and welcome to the Heaven Forbid Your Movie Make Money podcast, the show where we help independent filmmakers find distribution and an audience for their movies. Today, we are going to be talking about self-distribution versus working with a distribution company, a distribution agency or sales agent. Um, really try to get into like the nitty gritty without hopefully being too boring about it. Uh, my name is Daniel. I am an independent filmmaker and the video production manager here at Trademark Films. And I'm Abby, and I am the social media and content manager at Trademark Films and also an independent filmmaker. So we established that she is a independent filmmaker, and most people are independent filmmakers. Last episode, mm -hmm. uh, we try to be very inclusive about who and who is not a filmmaker. Um, Bring everybody in. Yeah. Eh, see... Get in here to yeah, the industry. It doesn't matter if you're making YouTube videos. It doesn't matter if you're making blockbusters. Yeah. It doesn't matter what level of filmmaker you are. As long as you, like, internalize being a filmmaker. I agree. Like, there is a certain level of, like, you care about, you care about it, you know? Yeah. Like, you want to get better. You're looking, at, you're, you're seeing it as an art, you know? I think that's, like... Exactly. Yeah. Like if someone's just like, I don't know, slapping paint on a canvas, I'm not going to be like, you're not an artist. Like they're an artist, you know, yeah. even if they're just like waving their paintbrush and splattering it like, you know, who are we to say? Art is in the eye of the beholder, right? Very true. And part of our job is making sure that people behold your art. So <laughs> and with uh, that <laughs> and with that. <laughs> uh, let's let's jump into today's topic of self distribution versus working with trademark. Last time we talked, just very brief overview of like what distribution is. You know, yeah. getting your film to an audience. Yeah. Um, and so this week, I really want to touch on the couple of things that are like why you would want to have. A company like work with a company like Trademark or any of the myriad of independent film distributors out there mm -hmm. versus managing it yourself. Yeah. Which I don't want to discourage people from self distributing. Totally. There, but there's a time and a place. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it's all about expectations, mm -hmm. right? For example, uh, I as an independent filmmaker, have made short films before. Mm -hmm. I've, um, you know, nothing great uh, uh, out of the gate, right? I, I do my best, and I would be the first to admit that if I watch them today, I cringe a lot. All of this stuff that I've done prior to working here at Trademark mm -hmm. has been self-distributed. Oh, yeah. And self-distributed, like to be more specific, self-distributed on YouTube. Yeah, which is not a bad route totally. for your films. But like you said, there's a time and a place. Yeah. Because right? you can. I mean, you can monetize on YouTube. You can be very exactly. successful and kind of get your own following, make your own platform. But um, we'll touch on this later. But you, as we were talking about this earlier, you made some really good points on, like, why once you get bigger and once you kind of go a different route, like, a company makes more sense. <laughs> and, like, uh, a little while ago I put out uh, just – a quick video on Instagram that was like, yeah, you know, everybody has their, their film idea. And it was like, you know, we get so many calls, so many emails, so many submissions for films. It's yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. And the best part of that video was you were like, kind of just, you know, not like making fun, but just like, you know, kind of laughing at how everybody everywhere is like, oh, you work in film distribution? Here's my movie idea. And then same day, like in response to that video, so many people slid into our DMs. People never slide into our DMs about movies. And they're like, hey, but I have a movie. <laughs> but like actually, though, yeah. and like in all sorts of stages mm -hmm. of, of 
production or ideation. You know, uh, we've gotten everything from, you know, completely finished films that have been to film festivals and just haven't been picked up Mm -hmm. and like, okay, yeah, no, totally. We want, we want to get that to, you know, kids out of high school being like, Hey, I have this idea. Um, I have basically just an elevator pitch, not even like a log line or a script or just like the beginnings of an idea for what might be kind of a good story for film. And it's just like, and everything in between pitch decks, yeah. um, teaser trailers, um, funding videos. Yeah. Uh, you know, which keep them coming. You yeah. know, we want to, we want it all. We want slide yeah. into our DMS more. <laughs> Ideally you have something finished to show. Us. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like what, well, one of the things that I've really appreciated about working here is that we've never really like turned anyone down Yeah. in the way of like, if it's not a finished movie, we're pro- we were probably not going to pick it up for distribution because we don't know what we would distribute, yeah. but we are more than happy to talk to you about your idea. Yeah. Maybe like if you have questions or like concerns, like we're happy to help you like navigate post-production yeah. or things like that. You know, it's really, even if it's not like a trademark films kind of a thing, like I am more than happy to talk to students, independent filmmakers, whoever about their ideas and, you know, just discuss them, fig- figure out some, some plans, game yeah. plans, just throw ideas at the wall, you know. Exactly. Like collaborate a little bit, make a community, which yeah. I think is, is great. Is the filmmaking community is just so nice. Mm. It has the capacity to be nice. <laughs> Do better. <laughs> Do better. As an independent filmmaker, there are things that you want to do when you've made your movie. Yes. You want to show as many people as possible. Absolutely. Um, regardless of the quality. You just want it to be shown. Yeah. You're right? excited. This is your passion project. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you want to share it. I, I actually had a couple of questions for you about your career as a filmmaker. Oh, yeah. Um, specifically, I know that there are... You have, you know, your degree in journalism Mm -hmm. and you've worked on several journalistic documentaries. Um, What, how did creating those and then, for lack of a better term, distributing those work for you? Oh, yeah. So we, um, for the one, it kind of came from like higher ups. It was um, in association with Brigham Young University. And so... I, and I could totally be butchering this. I'm very sorry if I am. But from what I understand, the people that were more involved in the story we were telling had actually like brought this to the university and been like, we want to do something with this. We want to tell this story. And the university was like, oh, we'll give it to the School of Communications. Like they do documentaries. They can, you know, they can work this out for you. And so from the get go, we had platforms where we were going to put it. We understood it was going to go on YouTube. It was going to go on um, the Daily Universe website because it was all by like journalism students and, you know, that's the publication. Mm -hmm. And so it was going to go on those two places. But then we also were talking um, and it wasn't ever guaranteed. But like, as we got through the process, um, we started talking more about being on BYU TV. And then once we did, you know, get approved to show on BYU TV, like then, you know, we had to kind of change a few things, make it fit a 30 minute time slot, things like that. And so. Um, I didn't really handle a lot of the like distribution factors Mm -hmm. just because that wasn't really ever anything I thought about. Like I was just like, oh yeah, of course we'll put it on YouTube. Of course we'll put it on the Daily Universe website and like be super sick. We could go on BYU TV and we did, but I wasn't really a part of those like backend conversations. I got you. Um, But yeah, like I guess YouTube was always a given and I never really thought about like, oh, are we going to put this on streaming? Like, you know what I mean? Or are we going to, are we going to get this to like... I don't know, Netflix or Amazon or anything. Um, it is on the BYU TV app, I believe, though. So it's like <laughs> kind of cool. Check it um, out. Check it out <laughs> or YouTube it. Um, so, but yeah, we were very much like um, one of the professors that worked with us on the documentary has done um, like 
I think like 30 plus documentaries for KSL. Oh. We were very self-distributed. Like we had mm -hmm. BYU TV, we had this bigger platform that we were going on, but you know, we had our, um, we didn't go through a company or anything. Um, but also I guess it's a little bit different because our goal wasn't to make money necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Um, like it was a project funded by the school and that like, it was more of an educational thing, not necessarily a, for a sure. monetary thing. But the idea is that it would get distributed and luckily, or at least luckily for you guys, BYU has basically its own distribution network, right? Yeah, exactly. It's already got those things set up. Uh, and so while I guess they might call it self-distributed, it's not really? Yeah, right? it's like it is through a different entity, I guess. Yeah. A different company. So let's uh, maybe talk about some of the types, like actual types of self-distribution. Totally. And I think that this is a, a good broad way of talking about it because all of the ways that you can self-distribute, you can also, like, will also do. Oh, totally. Kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, so the first type and probably the easiest for most filmmakers is self-distribution through free services like YouTube, yep. Vimeo, um, ways where, like, if you reach a certain threshold of viewers and followers and things like that, you can start monetizing um, you might not for independent filmmakers, unless you're putting out like consistently great content. It's also a way to like market your films. Mm -hmm. It's a really easy way to distribute. If you're like, you know, someone's like, Hey, I want to watch this. You send them a YouTube link kind of a thing. Right. Totally. Um, Vimeo is very similar. Vimeo is a lot more geared towards like filmmaking, filmmakers mm -hmm. kind of a thing, uh, which is great. Um, but it, they also have different audiences. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Um, unless they're specifically looking for it, people aren't probably going to pull up YouTube, be scrolling through and randomly see an hour and a half long movie yep. and watch it. Cause they're, they're not specifically looking to watch a movie at that point. They're looking to watch YouTube, um, yeah. medium is the message, that whole thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that, that is something to consider, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. In fact, I would recommend you do it. Right. Absolutely. Like there are so few barriers to entry with like YouTube and oh, yeah. Vimeo and things like that. Like it doesn't take a, re a really a ton of like your mental effort or anything exactly. like that to just get your movie out there with those, which is a huge plus. Oh, yeah. I mean, why would you not? You know? Oh, yeah. My stuff's all on YouTube. You yeah. Know? I will not tell you where you cannot find it, <laughs> but it's on there. Right. It exists. Um, especially. And then you have the option of VOD, video on demand. And there are different types, you know, TVOD, AVOD, SVOD, mm -hmm. um, all sorts of different acronyms. For those kinds of things, those are things like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, um, OTT websites, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Uh, there is more like, it's less content and more films, right? Yeah. And that's part of finding your audience, right? Yeah. Um, as an independent filmmaker, to be honest, very rarely will you probably get a call from somebody at Netflix that's mm -hmm. like, hey, we want to get your film on our platform. Yeah. It's going to be, you You might have to work with a sales agent or a distributor to get it on those bigger platforms. But there are like, um, there's what's called aggregator sites. Mm -hmm. These are things like uh, Film Hub, IndieFlix that like, you put it on the website and then they get it out to smaller. They're, they're kind of like working with a distributor, but it's very much like uh, just an internet service. Like you very rarely talk with someone face to face. You mm. put your movie on there and they're like, okay, we get it out to free sites, whatever it is, How, mm -hmm. however, it, uh, whatever they're able to get it out to. Yeah. But it's, and then they'll take a little bit of a cut from whatever you make, but it's still a way to, it's still considered self-distribution Yeah. because you're really the one managing it. You're really the one that like, they're not going to come to you and be like, Hey, there's a problem with your, your film They're It's just going to get taken down. You have to reupload whatever, however it works for those individual companies. But it's like, you're not building a relationship. You're just uploading it and it goes out a little bit. Yeah. If yeah. That makes sense. Totally. 
Another great way to self-distribute is actually film festivals. And in my mind, this is a preferred way to self-distribute because if you can get into a film festival, automatically it's got prestige. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's Sundance Film Festival, Tribeca Film Festival, Cannes Film Festival, or if it's Fire Island Film Festival, Docu Utah Film Festival, yeah, uh, the Utah High School Film Festival. I'm wearing their t-shirt. Hey. Uh, it automatically has some more prestige. Definitely. Right? Um, even if it doesn't win awards, that means that, like, uh, I think it was Mark yesterday was talking about this. It was either Mark or one of my professors. Uh, I, I have heard mention that it, if you self-distribute, like on YouTube, Vimeo, aggregator sites, that means that you feel like it's good enough for people to see. Yes. But if you get it into a film festival, that means at least you and one other person, mm. one of the judges at the film festival, somebody else saw it and thought it was good. Yeah. Too. And so that just gives it that next level of prestige, that next level of, um, I guess, I don't know what's, a, what's another way of describing it. It just gives it, like, that credibility. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's – the those are the kinds of ways that you can self-distribute. Now, you could potentially get in contact with, like, DVD manufacturers – or if you're feeling frisky, go get a DVD burner or Blu-ray burner from Best Buy and just yes. start cranking them out. And that's, you know, physical distribution. You can do that. That's and, true. <laughs> and go and just start, you know, selling them for a dollar at maker's markets or whatever. I Like, I don't know what you would do with that, especially in, like, today's world where it's all online. It's and cheaper to just send people a YouTube link. And who owns a DVD player? I do. My parents do, but I don't. Yeah, but you live with roommates. You That's just, true. And you just moved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I come across that problem. I'm like, oh, I want to get this movie and like the physical copy, but I'm like, what would I play it on? I do not own that a DVD is, player. That is an issue. Now, DVD players are cheap. You can get one for relatively cheap, That's right? True. That's I true. I just use my PlayStation, so that Yeah, works. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but... Really, all this, all the different ways of self distributing mm-hmm. really boils down to uh, a metaphor and uh, an analogy that I like to use of property management mm. or like real estate property management. Say you bought a duplex or you bought an apartment building mm-hmm. and you're managing that property. Yeah. That property is like your film and It is your responsibility to make sure everything is taken care of, all the rooms are filled, all the contracts are signed, all of the individual things are taken care of at all times. Mm -hmm. Um, There is so much to keep track of. Yeah. Now, sometimes, especially for like, you know, independent filmmakers who are just going to put on YouTube, you put on YouTube and then just kind of wait for it to come, come to you. It might blow up, it might not. You're, it, that's not really managing as much as just like putting it somewhere for people to watch mm-hmm. kind of a thing. But if you're actually like signing contracts, trying to get it in onto streaming services or onto cable TV, onto like these things, you have to manage all those contracts. Yeah. Right? You have to fill all of those rooms in your apartment. Building. Yeah. Um, versus now, if you want to work with a film distribution company like Trademark Films or sales agents or things like that, that puts the pressure of managing that property onto the distributors. Yeah. Now, the pressure is less on you to make sure all the rooms are filled, to make sure all those contracts are signed, to make sure that all the right uploads are are on the different streaming services, yeah. that everything's up to up to the standards of individual services because like Netflix and Hulu have completely different standards that they hold your film to and Amazon, same thing. And so it's like you could take care of all that. Yeah. And there are times where you might have to and might want to or you could let us take care of it. Yeah. 
I mean, really, self-distribution is a very viable option and probably the best option for a lot of filmmakers out there. Like, if you're just, you know, if this is your first short film ever, it's probably not the best idea for you to try and get a distribution deal with a company. Like, maybe it is, but also, like, I don't know. Like, I look back at videos that I've made, like, when I was first starting out behind the camera, I wouldn't really want to try and get a professional deal with that, and I probably wouldn't be super successful. But, you know, when you've got films and you want to get them out there, it is very accessible to somehow distribute them through, like, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever. And really, all the things you've talked about with, um, like, what a distribution company does, you can do that by yourself. So it seems to me like um, it's really just a matter of growth, you know, like because you're right. going to get to a point where like, OK, I've got all these films and I want to do something more with them. And it is too much for me to handle. Like it's kind of just a natural step, a natural thing that comes with growing. You've you've outgrown being able to manage this yourself. And so you need you need a company. Um, yeah, absolutely. But it's not not to say that, like, you have to start out of the gate with a distributor or like there's not one right way to do it right but it's just kind of where you're at and what um where your production is headed i guess for sure the thing is too is that most distributors uh ourselves included depending on the deal that you get have term limits mm. too you know and so sometimes you are working with a distributor for three five ten years and then after that they're like okay great here's your movie rights back basically yeah the distribution rights back and then you can self-distribute you can put on youtube or whatever or vice versa you put on youtube starts getting some buzz people start watching it and a distributor is like hey i actually think that this would do well let's get it out there for more people to watch right it just let it it takes that pressure off mm -hmm. at the end of the day it's like now you don't have to do all the maintenance work you yeah. can start focusing on your next project. You can start focusing on your next film. I don't know of any filmmakers who don't have three or four or five ideas in the works at any one time, mm -hmm. right? And so you can get focusing on that while still letting the film you have grow. Yeah. Right? And another benefit that comes from working with like a distribution company is the contacts that you have. Yes. Like... We at Trademark, we already have contacts with people at like Netflix or Amazon, international distributors, educational distributors, mm -hmm. airlines, like physical media distribution. However, you would distribute it yourself. You have to find those phone numbers, find those contacts, build those relationships, and then maybe possibly get it picked up. Yeah. Or you work with a distribution company who has way more contacts, way more resources, way more opportunities and let them manage it for you right yeah there's a lot to be said for connections right. like that's a huge huge draw a lot of a lot of the film industry regardless of what level you're at is not what you know but who you know mm. right and so you know working with the right people makes a big difference mm -hmm. so those are some of the reasons that you might self-distribute or work with the company now if you have any movie projects that you'd like to work on for distribution or feel free to send them our way you can submit them on our website we're happy to take a look and and stick around for more podcast episodes they come out every other friday yeah. this has been heaven forbid your movie make money thank you so much for watching we'll see you next time <laughs>